of my message is walk in the truth. So we are starting second John. Jonathan, look at in front. We worship God. Let's read uh, Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews is verse 4. Please. Okay. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. Eunice, can you recite? Thank you. Thank God for the completion of our study of our first John. Let's briefly remember some important words. Fellowship in chapter 1. Our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. In chapter 2, an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. How wonderful it is to have an advocate with the Father, our best lawyer, best counselor, who can bring to him any case, putting out our agony, our sorrows, even our bitterness. Advocate. And anointing from the Holy One. Amid Antichrist, we have the anointing from the Holy One. Chapter 3, children of God, hold the children of God in His lavishing love. And chapter 4, spirit of Antichrist, and God's love of an atoning sacrifice, sent His Son into this world. It's an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And this command to love one another. Chapter 5, overcoming the world in eternal life. To overcome the world with faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and assured of eternal life. Keywords are here. Final exaltation, keep yourselves from idols. Can be brief overview of first John we completed. We pray that especially God's love of atoning sacrifice is a command of loving one another to be deep in our hearts so that our fellowship with the Father and with the Son may grow in life, to be full of grow in our lives, to be full of life and joy. We believe that that's the way to overcome the spirit of Antichrist and the world that is under the control of the evil one. The last thing, the last living apostle, John, he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, around AD 90 to 95, at the end of that century, while he was in the ministry at Ephesus. Just after that, he received revelation in the year AD 96. Ah, in AD, AD that's 96. In first John, we thought a lot about love. God is love. Sending his son to the point of becoming an atoning sacrifice. God is love. And love comes from God. His love is a perfect one. He first loved us. Then in 2nd and 3rd John, we find the expression, love in the truth. Love in the truth. It is a general idea of the whole Bible that love and truth go together. Yes, God is love. Also, God is the God of truth. And Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. 
And if he thus, he said, speak the truth in love. Yes, truth and love go together. However, the specific expression, love in the truth, is found in 2nd John and 3rd John. So, in 2nd and 3rd John, Apostle John leads us more to the realm of the truth. Realm of the truth. He leads us more. Again, yes, God is God of truth. God of truth. Jesus is the truth. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Written three times in John's Gospel, Jesus said. And Bible is the scripture of truth. In 1 John, he provided doctrinal tests and behavioral tests through which you could evaluate the truth. And he has written this epistle to all in general. So in a sense, it's a general epistle. But 2nd and 3rd John, these epistles, the shortest epistles in the New Testament, written to individuals. 2nd John to a lady, 3rd John to a man. Chaos. The reason for writing and calling people to live in the truth is because of the ever-present threats of false teachers. Then people wonder, why not? To a church, why are you to individuals? The issue behind these errors is uh, discernment to protect the truth even to the personal level. In the case that God does not want even one believer or one family exposed to falsity. The influence of the falsity in the family can spread like gangrene, as Paul said in Second Timothy. The influence in our family can be spread gangrene. It's very important to protect our mind, personally, our home, community of God's people. Let's study the second John addressed to a lady. He says, the elder to a chosen lady. Lady is a very interesting word. In Greek, it is Korea, feminine, feminine form of Kyrios, meaning Lord. So Lord and Lady. Lord had some kind of sovereign power, Lord. And Lady is the feminine counterpart. It's feminine counterpart. Lady had a certain lordship over home. So she is the lady of the house. When you read 1 Timothy chapter 5 and Titus chapter 2, women are those who wash the stranger's feet and care for home and children. Lady, very meaningful word. So today's first part is walking in the truth. Verse 1, John continues, Elder to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. And not I only, but all those who know the truth, because of the truth, which lives with us and will be with us forever. From the very beginning of this epistle, the word, the term truth is very much stressed, written three times. It's the truth that bound John to the lady. It's the truth that bound John to the children. It's the truth to the truth that bound that is bound to all, bind all to each other. Truth. Here we see and see all who know the truth share their spiritual life. Here we see that our Christian community is connected by the truth. And truth, and it is a body of this connection, is a body of the truth, revealed truth. It is a truth that unites us together. That is to say that all believers are linked together 
by a common knowledge of and belief in the truth. Apostle Paul said in 1st Timothy chapter 3, Believers are God's, whole, God's household, that is the church of the living God, the foundation and pillar of the truth. The church exists as the pillar and ground of the truth. If church abandons the truth, then it is not the church of Jesus Christ anymore. Mm -hmm. And bound, I love in the truth. Love is bound by the truth. Our affections, our sympathies, our care, and our compassion, our concern for each other is experienced because we are tied in the truth. Truth must govern the exercise of love. And then John sends greetings. Grace and peace. Grace and mercy peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ. The Father and Son will be with us in love and truth. Mm. See? How much we need grace, mercy, and peace. We need it. Grace for our sins, mercy for our misery, and Peace for turmoil. We need it, but you can receive it in truth and love that accompanies the truth. Now, John says, It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. Walking in the truth. It seems to be a general expression, but this exact expression is found only here in 2 John and 3 John in the Bible. Walking in the truth. Those that says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Then what does it mean, walking in the truth? Jesus said in John chapter 12, Walk, you, you are going to have light a little longer. And walk while you have light before darkness overtakes you. Jesus said this in the concept of light and darkness. But here, John says, walk in the truth, surely in contrast of lies and deceptions. Children of God to walk in the truth in the world of lies and liars. When Jesus had a conversation with, a, he had time to have conversation with Pilate at time of trial. Jesus said, said to him, You are right in saying I am a king. For this reason I was born. For this I came into this world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Then Pilate asked, What is truth? What is the truth? At this point he knew the truth. But he responded cynically and skeptically. And Jesus came as the king of truth. Revealed this to Pilate from another kingdom, kingdom of truth. He came to survive the truth. He's the king of the truth. And then he, another time he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And also in John chapter 8, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and truth will set you free. And in his prayer to the Father, with disciples, sanctify them by the, by the truth. Your word is truth. The truth is source of our salvation. Truth is source of our unity. Source is our abiding confidence. Yes. We are united by the truth. More than the truth unites us, more than the truth is to be. Indwelt. We are indwelt by the truth. And it's source of our celebration, source of our unity, and our abiding confidence. Then think about walking in the truth. Yes, in the Old Testament, we hear, you know, walked with God. No one walked with God. Walking is daily practice. And Christians are those 
Christian life is to walk in the truth. Walk in the truth. And John also wrote in chapter 2, John wrote in chapter 2, he says, whoever claims to live, with, to live in him must work as Jesus did. So, it is to be controlled by the truth, moving around in the truth. Christian life is defined by the truth. And truth not only to be believed, but it's a way of living. Also, walking the truth includes doing what is right. So he said in chapter 2, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of God. And anyone who does not do right is not a child of God. What is right? When you think more, walking in the truth, walking is step by step. You can ask the whole path. But we walk, walk step by step. We walk step by step. Being assured of the final path, destiny. There is complete salvation and eternal life. Again, recognize the whole path, but being assured of path righteousness, we walk step by step. That's what David said. He guides me. Past righteousness, who is name sick? Again, final destination is a complete observation, eternal life. So David says, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You probably heard about the story of two sets of footprints in the sand. It's a person's dream, in the dream. He walked on the sea, on the beach. It seen there are two sets of footprints. One of Zephyrin said of the Lord, another set of his. But he could see sometimes only one set of footprints. Especially there was time he was the most saddest and most troublesome time. So he asked the Lord, Lord, why one set? When I need you most, you will leave me. The Lord answered, No, no. In the time of testing and trials, no. When there is only one set of footprints, that time I carried you. Yes, it's a person's dream, but I believe that's true. Never think that you are alone, even though you are in saddest and troublesome time. No, no. That time I carried you. Believing that God wants us to walk in the truth. Quit the time. Walk in the truth. And Jesus continues here. Even now, and now, dear lady, I'm not writing you a new one, command, but one you have had from the beginning. I ask that you love. No, this is print. I ask that we love one another. This is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. Now, John talks about love and walking obedience to his commands. Love is to obey his commands. The key point of the commands is to love God and love his neighbor. Quite true. Love is to walk in obedience to his commands. And when he Walk in obedience to his commands, that leads us to love God and love our neighbor. That's what John said in chapter 5. We know that we love the children of God because we love, we know that we know love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God to obey his commands. Quite true. Loving God and God's children and obey his commands are one set. And then here, John says, his command is that we, you walk in love. Now we see, walk in the truth, walk in obedience to his commands, and walk in love. All are written here together. 
Here we can think more about walking up. How can we? He said in John chapter, verse John chapter 3, Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. All the fallen men are descendants of Cain. There's no true love for unrighteous sinners. All the righteous acts are like filthy rags. Then John wrote, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. This is the truth, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, for our salvation, for our sins. How he laid down his life? We remember his prayer of Gethsemane. He cried on the cross, laid down his life for our salvation, for our sins. That's the truth. That's the love. And here is the command. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. No one but those who accept this love of Christ, who lay down his life for us, can practice the love of Christ, crucify our simple nature at each moment. And let's think more about walking in the truth. In 2 Thessalonians, it says, Paul said, And in every sort of evil that deceives the those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sent them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. Wow. Powerful delusion. God sending because they refuse to love the truth. Here we see that loving the truth and working the truth is the way to overcome the powerful delusion. Otherwise, all can be swept away, this great, powerful delusion. And when you think about these words, I, it gave me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth. Yes, this is John's joy, and godly parents' joy, shepherd's joy, that children of God are walking in the truth. You see, the God's urging us Definitely it's God's pleasure, God's joy when you walk in the truth. Who can walk in the truth? Great scholars? No. God's children can walk in the truth. That gives joy to God. He urges us to walk in the truth, especially at crucial time in life. Sometimes truth does not seem to be clear to us. In such a time, Remember God's promise. He promised, if you from there seek the Lord your God, you'll find him. If you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul, God's promise. So walking in the truth includes seeking the Lord wholeheartedly. And Jesus said, he prayed, Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I praise you because you have hidden these things to the wise and learned, but he will them to the truth. So how much we should humble ourselves to walk in the truth? The truth should not be hidden to us, but revealed each week, each day to walk in the truth. That's why in the last year message, James said, God opposed the proud and gives grace to the humble. James said, Peter said, quoted from Proverbs three times. God opposed the proud, gives grace to the humble. This is what also Micah said in Micah chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly and love mercy and work humbly with your God. Pray. May help us to walk in the truth, walking humbly with our God. Amen. Second, welcome in the truth. Welcoming in the truth. Now, verse 7 says, Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone into the world. Now, John talks about deceivers contrasted to those who walk in the truth. They gone out into the world. Into the world means every realm of human life. They went everywhere in the world. Where? They could corrupt the gospel, corrupt the gospel everywhere to pollute the church. And these words are those 
who do not acknowledge that Jesus coming as the flesh. The greatest truth is that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That's greatest truth. Jesus Christ is one person. Shimon Jesus and divine Christ. Two natures, but one person. He's God man. Why in the flesh? To be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Greatest truth. This is God's law. Those who acknowledge this, do not acknowledge this, they are deceivers. Antichrist. That's John also said in 1 John. Who's the liar? He's the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He denies the Father and the Son. Again in chapter 4. Every spirit that does not acknowledge just coming, just Christ has come in the flesh, is not from God. Acknowledge it from God. Not acknowledge it, not from God. Antichrist. The man said again here. And then he said, Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Think about this. Lose what you have worked for. Unthinkable. Do not lose what you have worked for. But be rewarded fully. That's why Hebrews says, Run the race. Back it up for you. To the end. And he says continually, Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ is not, does not have God. Those who run ahead are those who assume that they have mastered gospel's teaching and eager to seek something new, try different. But in fact, they have no God, no part with God. The teaching of Christ is teaching about Christ or Christ's own teaching. And he says, anyone who continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Continue in the teaching. Yes, Christian life is to walk in the truth that is continue in the teaching of Christ. That's also, he said in 1 John, as for you, the only thing received remain in you. And you don't do not need anyone to teach you. But as the anointing teaches you about all things, and the anointing is true, not counterfeit, remain in him. Remain in him. And Jesus said, or John's gospel, I'm the vine and your branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. As Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Yes, remain, continue, and hold to. And then he says, If anyone comes to you, and do not bring this teaching. Do not take him to your home or well, welcome him. In other translation, even do not greet him. And anyone who welcomes him shows him his wicked work. What a strong warning. At that time, there were itinerant preachers who visit homes and preach the gospel. It was good customary that believers opened houses to them and listen to them. It was good, but there were those preachers who made use of this. I think one reason, the main reason of writing this epistle is to help the lady have discernment to whom she should open the houses. Maybe unwittingly and unintentionally, she opened the home to such horse teachers, be out of great hospitality. But now, the truth must govern even hospitality. Truth is more important. Don't share their wicked work. As in our time, we do not invite, we do not, we have, do not have itinerary preachers. But we are living in an individualistic society, yet we invite people homes. In, in our time, connection is very strong, powerful, through all kinds of means, SNS, connection. To me, connect, mirrors. Watch out. Your connection. The ultimate deceiver, evil one, can infiltrate your mind, your home, God's community to destroy your gospel faith. Anything that weakens or destroys, ruins God's faith or child. You remember in Galatians, we have only one gospel, gospel of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. If anyone preaches another gospel, angel or man, he may be eternally punished, condemned. Such attitude, a child. And John says here, 
I write. I yeah, much more to write to you, but I don't want to use your paper and ink. I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. I want just to have deeper and deeper fellowship, you know, community. And joy is one of the characteristics of the community. And joy is one of the main themes of the first, second, and third time, joy. And finally, it says, children of your chosen sister sends their greetings. Two chosen ones, beautiful sisters. So what were their children? What an encouragement it is that children of their sister send greetings. Study, I really pray that may help us to walk in the truth and welcome in the truth. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for helping us to study second John. Father, we really learn that our Christian community is connected by the truth. And we are in the body of truth, revealed truth, truth in Jesus Christ, linked together, tied together in the truth. In that truth, love is to be practiced. Father, we remember beautiful words. It has given me great joy to find some of my your children walking in the truth. As the Father has commanded us, your child's joy, your godly parents' joy, shepherd's joy, more than is that, is God's joy. Father, God's children are to walk in the truth. In this world of lie and deceptions, Father, there are times truth does not seem to be clear, but we believe it's the very time to seek again, again, find you. Be sure of the truth, walk in the truth. Truth may should not be hidden, but we build week by week, day by day. We can walk in the truth, step by step. Ultimately, it leads us to eternal celebration, eternal life, eternal home. Dear Father, remember us. Please, we see perfect religion going on in this world. Maybe to see, discern, recognize, speed of truth and speed of falsity follow the spirit of truth. That's the way to walk in the truth. Lead us, your people, one by one, put each one from the ultimate deceiver. Okay. We can walk in the truth. To the end, lead your people. Thank you for your words. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.